good afternoon dear president president elect past presidents of the ISL, president of slic engineer kpi udarmapal engineer priyali silva speaker today Family members of late Indian President J. Sekhar. This is Kamala Kunavatana, Chairman Civil Engineering Sectional Committee, Council members, members of the ESL, and all the invitees. You all are welcome to the first remembrance lecture of Vidya Jyoti Engineer Emeritus Professor Dayanthi J. Sekhar, jointly organized by the IESL and SLAICE. <clears throat> Our first item of the agenda is light in the traditional oil lamp. I cordially invite the following dignitaries. President of IESL, Engineer Dr. Kamal Laksiri, President elect of the IESL, Engineer Professor Anjit Disanayaka, President of SLAICE, Engineer KPIU Dharmapala, Past President, Engineer Chula De Silva, a family member of Engineer Professor Dayanthi Vijay Sekara, Engineer Ms. Kamala Gunavadana, Chairman Civil Engineering Section Committee, President IESL, Mrs. Badrani Thoradaniya, and Engineer Neela Besekar, Chief Executive Officer. To all are come to light the traditional oil lamp. Our past president, Engineer Priyal De Silva, speaker. I think I have mentioned your name. Sorry about it. This uh, light the traditional oil lamp. If you can rise.
Thank you very much. Kindly be seated. I hope the, this uh, event is uh, held online as well. There are a number of online viewers. You all are also welcome to the uh, lecture today. Our next item as per the agenda is to give away the welcome speech. I cordially invite engineer Dr. Kamal Laksari, president of IESL, to deliver it. Very good evening to all of you. Let me welcome all of you to this uh, remembrance lecture. Professor Dante Vijay Sekara, our past president. And this event, as you mentioned, is jointly organized by the IESL and the uh, Sri Lanka Association of IC UK. The, first, the idea came from the current president, Indira Dhanupal, and then we discussed that in a short time we wanted to uh, fix it to September. That's how uh, we are in this in a short notice. Let me welcome all of you formally. First of all, our uh, speaker today, past president, engineer Priyal de Silva. Sir, you are most welcome. Then the family members, Mrs. Vijay Sekara, and the other members of the family who are joining with us today. Then the special invitees, past president, uh, the uh, president of IESL, engineer Mrs. Badra Kortadinia. And the immediate past president, Mrs. Nidasa. Chairman of the Civil Engineering Section Committee, Engineer Mrs. Kamala Gunawadana, and uh, Chief Executive Officer, Engineer Neil Abesekara, and the ISL staff, all the members of ISL, all the members of Sri Lanka Association of ICUK. So let me welcome all of you, warmly welcome for this first event, uh, the remembrance lecture of Professor Dante J. Sekere. Uh, I'm not going to read the record of him, but uh, next, our speaker, Engineer Dharma Pala, the... Yeah, sorry, I missed there. We have a number of members joining online. Welcome all of you also. This event is conducted hybrid, and members from overseas and from our local chapters. So let me welcome all of you also. The, uh, I think uh, he's not Professor Dianthi Vijay Sekere is not a stranger to all of us here in the in school and in the industry academia. He was a teacher for all of us. He was my teacher. And he was instrumental in introducing many things to this country, the industry, in the academia. He was our past president and he was the founder chairman of the Sri Lanka Association of IC and also the unrepresentative of IC UK. So the tremendous service he has rendered to this country in the sector. I think all of you as are well aware and uh, our engineer Dhirupal will give a detailed account of that. So the I hope this event we uh, started this year. And jointly with the slaves, we'll, this will become an annual event. And so with that, uh, let me, well, I'm sorry, I uh, past chairman of SLACE, Engineer Tabru, is also here. Yes, sir, you are most welcome. To, uh, I saw you very, <laughs> for this time, after a long time here. So most welcome, you, sir. Uh, and with that, uh, let's move to the proceedings. I invite the uh, Nila Basic to continue the, the program. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, President. Our next item is uh, just my immediate past president. Virginia K. Pay Dharmapala is the past president of the 
is the immediate past president of the ESL, as well as he is the president of CLIC. What you see? Good afternoon, everybody. President of the IESL, President elect, Civil Engineering Sectional Committee Chairman, Chairperson, Chief Executive Officer of the IESL, Past Presidents of the IESL, Past Presidents of the SLES Sri Lanka Association for Institute of Civil Engineers UK, Executive Members of the SLES, Council Members, and uh, members who are joining over the Zoom platform, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, I would like to say thank to IESL president who, who has given his immense support to conduct this event jointly with SLAYS. When I proposed this idea during the past president's forum, unanimously it was approved. Then I made a formal request to IESA through Civil Engineering Sectional Committee. It has gone to council and council also approved. For all this, my sincere thanks. So Professor Bayanta S. Vijay Sekara is, uh, is known to everybody. He is one of our past presidents. I met him first. He came for a IC matter to meet me at my residence, far away from 50 kilometers away from Palambo. Before that, I have never met him. So once he finished the matter, he came. I don't know about him, what type of a person he is. He built more than five feet height. So I invited him for the lunch. So he accepted me. And after his lunch, after having lunch, before he got into his car to leave for Colombo and he got down from the car and say, Dharampala, I want you to do a, some, do a small thing. These applications are called from IC UK people for professional review reviewers. Why don't you apply? I can't say anything, say no, or I said yes, sir, I will apply. So after that, so many people applied, three of us, including Professor Gayanta Vijay Sekar, myself, and Dr. Madhuri And we had so many PRUs in Hong Kong, Chennai. Because of this matter, I became a very close associate of him. I realized what type of a person he is. He's human qualities, all these things I realized after having this association. Professor Danta S. Vijay Sekara was born in 23rd September 1942. He was educated in Sri Lanka, St. Thomas's College, Mount Lavinia. Then Ceylon Technical College, Maradana, and Institute of Practical Technology, Kadubadda. Thereafter, 
in the united kingdom we have graduated in civil engineering from enfield college london in 1965 and was awarded the postgraduate degree of doctor of philosophy from the university of edinburgh in 1969 and in 1995 also he was awarded the honorary doctorate of the british open university for his contribution to distance and open learning also he was awarded the honorary doctorate of the open university of sri lanka for the contribution and development of education and uh, university management also the honorary doctorate of science of the university of morotua of sri lanka for the contribution of higher education and uh, university development and national development in 20 2009 professor vijay sekara was a lecturer in civil engineering in uk then since 1967 senior lecturer in civil engineering of the university of sri lanka kathmandu campus professor of civil engineering at the university of morotua in 1974 there after dean of the university of morotua in 1980 onwards he was the vice chancellor of open university of sri lanka for the period 1985 1994 for three terms consecutive three terms and vice chancellor of the university of morotua from 1995 in 2005 two terms so many positions they are after he has hold i am not going to talk about those things time will go such a big uh, cv he is having he has functioned as chairman of various state uh, organizations advisor and uh, consultant so all these things uh, i am not going to talk about but he was the president of this institution of this iesl for the session 1991 1992 he was the first sri lankan to hold the post of vice chancellor at two state universities in sri lanka the remarkable thing is he has been appointed as head of various institutions by seven executive presidents of the country starting from jr jayawardene in 1985 to gotabe on uh, rajapaksha in 2020 so that is his brief achievements so you can see he was awarded this honorary doctorate for promoting this uh, distance learning especially in open university sri lanka in 19 somewhere around 1917 or 1918 i one day i saw a newspaper article it says it was written by then minister dallas alahab peruna at a glance it gave it gave a very bad impression it says saspela samat samat navu mahacharya varaya so because of that i read that one so uh, when you go through that only we say that he is not telling any bad thing but he is 
telling how this person uh, after his easy o levels he became a vice chancellor of two universities and became a professor so what minister dalas alahapurma wanted to tell was that various various paths were available for students those who were not fortunate enough to enter into state universities but, but there are so many other avenues to become engineers in uh, other countries uk that is why professor vijay sekar he dedicated his time to achieve this target in sri lanka you may know how many people are there they became members of iesl but if we go back to their history uh, they were not qualified to enter into our universities uh, sri lanka because of the vacancies available or their it will be their rank or something is it will be below but they are performing well uh, after achieving this uh, after following this paths different different routes and uh, ultimately they become engineers and practicing engineers in sri lanka not only in sri lanka all over the world some have obtained mic uk and australia like that foreign institutions so one day i used to uh, get his advice also like being a when i was the president of this institution when issues are coming when i face those things i used to con contact our past presidents they know engineer chula is there engineer priyal is there so i got their advice and similarly i got the advice of uh, professor vijay sekar also one day he told me darmpal don't worry about these things mistakes failures insults frustrations rejections all these things are there we have to face these things those are the challenges you have to face and achieve the ultimate target if anybody achieve anything without facing these things there is no value of that achievement so he is one guy my faith he is like a father who is giving advice to our uh, the, to his own son like that so we lost him that is a great loss to the country if you go through this website and see where he work or how he function in various various institution in top positions you can realize that so finally i want to end up this saying this oh no person in the world has been rewarded for what he has received he is always honored for what he has given or dowry to the society at large society or to our motherland at large it is up to you think whether professor dant vijay sekara has dowry what are the things he dowry to the country what are the things he dowry to the nation thank you very much thank you very much sir dear pastor sir in kp avala let me have the honor of introducing our speaker today engineer priyal de silva graduated from university of sri lanka kadubad the campus was called the name those days he holds 
B.S. Engineer in Sri Lanka, Civil Engineering in 1973, and also Master's Degree in Engineering for Highway and Traffic Engineering in 1999. He's a fellow of both institutions of Engineers Sri Lanka and Chartered Institute of, Institute of Transport Sri Lanka. He was formerly a fellow of Institution of Engineers Australia and the Permanent Way Institution England. He was the president of the Engineering Students Union in 1973. As a professional, he was the general manager of the Sri Lanka Railway from 2001 to 2005. During this time, under his direction and personal supervision, the Sela was able to repair the tsunami damaged coastal line railway track in just 57 days with the surprise of high level managers of the government of Sri Lanka and even some foreign experts. He was the chairman of the Chartered Institute of Logistics and Transport Sri Lanka in year 2000. 2001 session and he was the president of the institution of engineers sri lanka during the session 2003-2004 he was awarded the excellence in engineering award in 2008 by the iesf he was the first non-academic professional engineer to receive this award the first time in sri lanka as well as in this region that both father and son have been the presidents of two leading professional institutions. His father is engineer Les De Silva, who retired as the general manager technical of SLR in 1975. Having said that, Mr. Pial De Silva, what do you say? Thank you for that introduction, Engineer Hila uh, President, Institute of Engineers Sri Lanka, Engineer Dr. Kamal Naksiri, uh, Chairman Slays, Engineer KPIU Karunapada, uh, Chairman Division Section Committee, Engineer Mrs. Kamala Gunawadana, Past Presidents, Members of the Family of Professor Dr. J. Sekara, uh, President WIESL, Mrs. Badrani Toradini, uh, members of the council, members of the executive committee of SLES, and ladies and gentlemen. Uh, actually, it is my privilege to tell something about Professor Dianta Vijay Sekara. At this stage, I'll be failing in my duties if I don't mention something. So I will start. With that, it's in fact I have having known Professor Dianta uh, uh, and having closely associated with him for over half a century, I'm extremely honored being invited by both chairperson of Civil Engineering Section Committee of IESL and Chairman Sless to deliver this inaugural remembrance lecture in memory of a legendary in the field of education. Vijay Jyoti. Engineer Emeritus Professor Dan Travis Sekara was my guru. I shall also mention that this is a unique occasion for me because it was Professor Dan Travis Sekara who delivered the inaugural memorial oration on behalf of my late father, whom Professor Vijay Sekara considered as his guru, which was organized by the Charter Institute of Logistics and Transport in 1996. Well, Professor Vijay Sekara is considered and is deputed as a visionary due to the noteworthy contribution made to uplift the technical education in this country. His ambition was always to start small and go step by step and achieve greater heights. With the establishment of University of Vocational Technology, he realized this objective by making the doors open for a semi skilled technician to end up as a qualified engineer. Let me now give you a brief account of Professor J. Saker from some tips I, that I exacted, but he has given me some time back. 
it was in the spring of 1966 in the month of april in the scottish highlands in edinburgh that dantha was appointed as a assistant in engineering at the university of edinburgh while he was still waiting for his doctor of philosophy his late wife nilun was studying for a medical degree at the same university at that time let me quote professor vijay sagar being a shy oc student trying to take to lecture to a group of white scotsmen was some challenge to me i was hoping that my adored late professor arnold henry head of department to design a class of junior students to begin my lecturing career lo and behold professor henry asked me to take the final year civil engineering hydraulic lectures which he is he which he himself was delivering all this time to my great surprise it was really been thrown into deep end of a swimming pool with the only thing is that i came from a nationality with a long ancient history of hydraulic civilization though i had read about the ancient hydraulic civilization in sri lanka and seen them during school trips etc i did not dare bring them up in my first lecture being in a part of world full of cotton dams and hydro schemes yes i could have spoken about the jod island and the great reservoirs built by the ancient kings of sri lanka but not in a climate where i had to work with stiff fingers covered with thick gloves carry out river gauge in icy cold waters during my industrial training as a student in addition to being the deep pen by taking an important subject in the final year i was made responsible to organize the two week survey camp for the civil engineering students more than the academic side controlling the students after sundown with beer going down in gallons was not to be in a got to be an easy task i was told that the tradition has been that the master in charge of the camp will be usually given a good ducking in the icy cold swimming pool on the last day which i was dreading but to my surprise i did not receive that icy bath but instead master in charge of the camp of the previous year was given a repeat performance to instill into him how well the camp was organized this time this i consider one of my first organizing features which has since stood by me throughout from the age of 24 years i unquote on professor vijay sekar returned to sri lanka it was his desire to continue his academic teaching career and did apply to ceylon college of technology for a lecturer's post to his surprise he was told that is an underage to be lecturer even though he was 28 years of old however the director at that time dr suman das elect superdasa was keen to recruit him and dr sugundasa got permission from the public service commission at that time to change the lower age limit of a, for a lecture that made him join the silon college of technology after working for a brief period as state engineering corporation as a, as a research engineer and went through its different phases of development as silon college of technology katabet campus of university of sri lanka and now the current university of burattu this experience of development of the institute with its own personal academic and professional development running in parallel from a, being a junior technical officer eventually to be a professor to the good stead and made him realize and always could advise others the importance of the step by step approach after after spending the development in the department of civil engineering at the university of moratua not forgetting the subject he should be teaching as to be civil engineering hydraulics subsequently in addition traffic and transportation engineering as both should flow it was also his privilege as the dean of the faculty of, to develop the faculty of engineering at the university it did not take long uh, for him to be pulled out from burtu to the open when he was made the vice chancellor of the open university of sri lanka at a time when the decision makers were thinking of closing it but the novelty of it together with the unseen support from all categories of staff helped him to run the university and make a mark and that time to be on the university which was open during the conflict and death certain date in the late 1980s it was a great achievement that with the cooperation of science and engineering staff of the university to be first distance education open university in the world to conduct up to degree level program of study in science and engineering technology 
as engineer uh, engineer Dr. Carl Vincent, after serving a record period of three terms, nine years as VC of four years, and he was able to revert back to the University of Seattle, was cemented to commit only two consecutive terms for a vice chancellor. When he had already completed three terms, at the end of this period, the then president of the Commonwealth of Learning, Sir John Daniel, in his citation conference, the honorary degree of university, quoted that in his opinion, that Professor Dantha Vijayasekara was one of the most dynamic heads in the world. Most of the construction of new buildings, inclusive of the present administrative building in open university came up during the tenure of Professor Dantha Vijayasekara. Having returned to the University of Morocco, it was not long. While being in the academic staff of the civil engineering department, he had to serve in various capacities, such as UND ILO consultant, chairman ICTA, chairman tertiary and vocational education commission, and was also elected the president of the institution in Sri Lanka. It was then that he was called upon to uh, be the vice chancellor of the University of Morocco. This being the first time to be vice chancellor for the second time in the island and made him eventually serve an unprecedented total aggregate period of 15 years as vice chancellor. During which latter period, he was also called upon to, to be the secretary of Ministry of Skills Development, Vocational Training, and Technical Education for a brief spell. It was during this time that the seeds were sown, a parliamentary bill was drafted to set up the University of Vocational Technology, of which he was privileged to be its chancellor during his official retirement as a university academic. In his early years at Muratua, he was much involved in traffic issues that were having an important impact on condition in the Colombo Fort area. And thus, he advised the police to make uniform system in Colombo Fort, which later the police department extended to other parts of Colombo as well to reduce congestion. Also, he was involved in training police officers on traffic matters where priority is to be given for pedestrians and public transport. Hence, I too selected a topic for public transport today for this inauguration to do justice to this leader and visionary. <clears throat> there are many students of Professor Vijay Sekara who have achieved high positions in life both here and abroad. And we owe our sincere gratitude to him for nurturing us and guiding us throughout our academic and professional career May he rest in peace. Now, coming to my lecture today, I have selected this subject, revolutionize the railway with emphasis on suburban connectivity. Yeah, this subject was selected because all of us know that railway, although it's a very cost-effective mode of transport, still, uh, the people are not patronized in the railway. So we had to find out what is the reason and we had to give some solutions how it could how the patronization could increase. It has a very low border share. I'll come to that. Let us uh, get on now. Yeah, there are many advantages of rail transport. One thing, as I told, cost effective and environmental friendly. Well, cost per passenger kilometer is only 68 cents. Now, a train engine uses four liters of diesel uh, to travel one kilometer. Right now, four liters of diesel in today's price is 344 is uh, 1324, 341, then, uh, yeah, 360,364. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, the trade can take 2,000 people. So, when you divide 1364 by 2,000, it is 68 cents. So, and the first section cost is only rupees 20 compared to bus, which is rupees 30, road bus rupees 30. Now, similarly, if you take the cost of a passenger kilometer of a road bus, a road bus is the other way around, it travels four kilometers with one liter of diesel. So, that is for travel one kilometer, it is only 341 divided by 4, it is 485 rupees. And but only the bus can take only 50 passengers. So, therefore, per passenger kilometer bus is 85 divided by 50 is 170. So, this is the difference is two and a half times. So, rail is very cost effective that way. So, I have also not 
noted here that immediate sub in the immediate suburbs, the railway uh, was, uh, railway fare is rupees four per kilometer, and tapers down to rupees three per kilometer after twenty kilometers, and further tapers down to rupees two per kilometer after hundred kilometers, and one fifty per kilometer after two hundred kilometers. Now this is actually half that of the bus. Now bus, if you can see the last. Uh, Paragraph: Immediate suburbs to be seven per kilometer and tapers down to five per kilometer after twenty kilometers, and further tapers down to be four per kilometer after hundred kilometers and three per kilometer after two hundred kilometers. So, but there are issues in railway. What are these issues? Now, one thing is, the, as I told earlier, passenger modal share is only five percent, and the freight modal share is only one percent. So, we, in order to increase this model share, it may be that we and attract people to the rail, we may have to give some facilities to them. So, in this presentation today, what I am trying to do is I am trying to sort of highlight the facilities which could be given and attract more passengers to the train. Now, one thing is we have some issue. Now, rail has to maintain its own infrastructure. You know, rail has to maintain its own uh, tracks. Bridges, then the station buildings, the tunnels, all those things. But in case of road bus, road bus runs on the road maintained by somebody else. They don't pay a road tax either, right? And it goes on. So, but only thing is now these facilities that I am trying to highlight will only come useful if only if train the trains will. Improve on punctuality and reliability. Now you know very well, trains are not punctual, but trains can be punctual. Well, about 15 to 18 years back, trains suburban service was 80 percent punctual with a lot of monitoring. But today, it is not so. But and the reliability now the reliability is all of a sudden there are lightning strikes, so trains are not reliable. People don't know when the next train is coming, and so forth, so forth. So now let me just uh, detail out the types of trains that we have in Sri Lanka. Now these are the suburban commuter train, then the long distance commuter train, uh, long distance express trains with limited stops, or peak trains stopping at all stations. Intercity trains, freight trains, and the trains chartered by groups. I will give a detailed elaboration of these different types of trains during the course of my presentation. But let us get to the next slide. Now, this is the ticketing. Now, this is a very important thing because now we have station to station, normal destination, or zonal ticketing. Now, the uh, actually the uh, railway. Has divided the stations into zonal, zonal ticketing, but they don't. But but still, the ticket goes as station to station. Now there are groups. What I mean by zonal is now, for instance, uh, Palambu to Dehiwala uh, is one particular zone. Then from Mount Levenia to some Morocco maybe another zone. The, the zone A to zone so within the zone A, there's a the lease price is there. Zone A to zone B, there's a little higher price. Then zone A to zone C, even higher price. So that's how the zones are divided. Uh, and uh, but the but the tickets are from station to station. Now, for instance, if you want to buy a ticket from Dehiwal to Mount Levenia, you can get a ticket from Dehiwal to Mount Levenia. It doesn't mention any zone. So, uh, so Uh, that is how the tickets are. Even there are about two hundred, there are three hundred twenty combinations of tickets. Three hundred twenty combinations, but there are three hundred twenty different stations. So there are three hundred different, three hundred twenty different types of tickets uh, uh, printed in Sri Lanka Railway. Now in foreign countries, on the other hand, uh, there are concessionary day tickets. That is for metro metro travel. Then also you have off peak. Uh, that is the concession day ticket is for for 24 hours. It's valid for 24 hours. 24 hours. Then off peak ticket is there. That is which is 
varied from 9 o'clock in the morning till 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Then you have the day return, that is for long distance trains, you go somewhere to outstation and come back uh, during the day, within 24 hours, this is called a day return. Then also you have the two day return. So those are consistent tickets. But since Sri Lanka Railways, the ticketing price is very low, I don't think Sri Lanka Railways want to introduce this type of tickets. And of course, uh, I have to tell you another thing, you know, people also won't get motivated when the train tickets are at uh, priced at a very low level because they know how hard they work, you know, there is no benefit, benefit because the organization still runs at a loss. That is one thing. Then season tickets. Now the season tickets are there for daily travelers and in Sri Lanka Railways, the season tickets are priced at uh, 11% for uh, public officers who are working in government departments, 11% uh, of the normal fare, then 35% of the normal fare for people who are employed in private sector. Uh, so sometimes uh, you may be wondering now during peak hours, the trains are fully crowded and railway will be making money. No, railway doesn't make money because of the season tickets. Because even they, they can't, even railway doesn't break even on the cost even. Now, uh, today the in uh, variable cost of running a train kilometer is about 2,300 rupees. But the train can carry only 2,000 people. So it's a loss. So that is something. Then, of course, the warrants. You have the warrants for holiday travelers issued by various government departments like survey department, education department, and so forth, so forth. So that, of course, is reimbursed to the railway by the respective department. Then the concessionary tickets for groups of special journeys, pilgrimage, etc. Yes. Uh, now, as gentlemen, the railways, the gentlemen, the railway can give a discount of 40% for this group travel. And any further discount, you let go to the ministry and the minister can allow up to about 80%. So that's according to the railway ordinance. So uh, that is dedicated for this Poson travel, then Madhu, Madhu festival travel for those things can be given. Now on the other side of the this particular side, the first first ticket is a ticket which is uh, issued uh, in a foreign country for for distant travel, for long distance travel. Then the second group is a ticket which is issued. A small ticket which issued from a machine. Now, earlier one was issued by online, now you can get from machine. Second one is issued from an automatic machine uh, for metro travel. Now, the third one is a Sri Lanka railway ticket. Now, this is a ticket which takes about easily 30 to 40 seconds to be issued because this is a very old type of way of doing it. The station master takes a ticket from the shelf, he puts into a machine to date stamp it. That machine accepts only this particular thickness of the ticket, uh, nothing else. Then uh, he gives it, then he has to get the cash and return the cash. All that takes about 30 to 40 seconds, and you got two minutes, only three the passengers can be issued tickets. So <laughs> that this requires to be changed, and this requires uh, because there are queues being formed, especially during peak covers, and uh, sometimes people miss the trains because of they don't have the tickets and so forth. The the irony of it, this the irony of it is this particular ticket that Sri Lanka Railway is issuing is uh, actually cost about uh, twenty two rupees after printing also. Uh, this is. This is little more than this is more than the cost of the lowest fare in Sri Lanka railways. The lowest fare cost is 20 rupees, while this ticket costs 22 rupees. So these are some issues that the policymakers must take into account. Definitely, this ticket will have to go off now. It's high time it goes off, and a paper ticket must come in. Right. Uh, now, recommended issues that will improve customer satisfaction is. To run longer trains during peak covers, uh, that is what Sri, Sri Lanka railway officials are doing now. They are extending certain platforms to run longer trains because you know our problem is our people. With when a first train comes, they try to get in, right? And they uh, hang on the footboard. They hang on various 
uh, and this uh, buffers and because it get out of the buffers and so forth and they run they travel very dangerously because they don't have the confidence that the second train will come that's the reason so now because of that reason these people are trying to uh, run run longer trains but there are limitations to this because especially in the single line sections the loop like loop lengths are limited there are limitations in the loop lengths so supposing two long trains try to cross in a single line section there will be difficulty so and of course the next alternative is i will show you a picture is to run double deck trains like in other countries then end training and detailing to be easy with the uh, raising of platforms to flow level of terrain that is like in foreign countries because now at the moment especially during peak hours getting in and getting out is a is a difficulty because they take a long time to get in and get out uh, therefore train has to stop sometimes one minute or little more than one minute uh, at certain stations now from arudama to kalambu there are 25 stations so actually by if you stop at one minute or little more the train is late by half an hour due to the stops actually this should be reduced at least to 15 minutes due to stops uh, so Raising of platform is is an important thing. Then ticketing for suburb travel to be obtained through automated machines, which I spoke. Entrance and exit gates at stations to facilitate easy access and exit by having security gates. Uh, yeah. Now this is the tur turnstiles, which are normally which are seen in uh, other countries. Uh, I'll come. I'll show you a photograph of that, and I'll show you the benefit of having turnstiles. Um, and of course now the. In recent past, when uh, many stations has uh, have actually without having steps, they are having ramps to get from one platform to the platform because it is easy to roll the baggage. Now that also should be uh, looked into. Then direction both sides stations to be in so that is now in certain stations the trains come underground and actually near a junction where there are so many roads on top and uh, without you know interfering with the road traffic. I mean, if you have direction boards underneath to cross to the road that you really want to go, then you don't uh, interfere with the traffic. So that, uh, in case we are having going to have in the future uh, MRT or LRT or whatever it is, I mean, this kind of thing can be adopted. Then announcement to be made on time of next train and possible connecting trains. Now, especially we are we don't have seamless travel everywhere. Now, for instance, what I mean by seamless travel is a person coming from Bayangur. If he wants to go to Nigambur line at Ragama, the he has to get down and get into a connecting train, which goes to Nigambur. Or on the other side, the way if he comes to uh, Maradana, if he wants to go to Narayan Peter, he has to get into a cable line train. But on, on board, there has to be announcement or a display saying that your next train to this particular destination. Is available on platform number so and so, uh, and it comes at this time. So now that those are very friendly ways of, uh, you know, giving information to the passengers. Uh, and also uh, there are unusual stops and delays due to various issues. Sometimes uh, maybe if it stops at a station, sometimes there is an oncoming train, but the passengers don't know why it stopped. So they have to mention that there is an oncoming train. Therefore, the train is stopped, and we are going to start at this particular time as soon as this train comes in. Or if there is a train which has earlier gone and they are not clear the section, then again you have to say, okay, this particular train has gone earlier, so they they will clear the section in another three four minutes time, and they will be starting our journey in three four minutes time. Now those that kind of announcements are never made in Sri Lanka railway. So in order to get attract people, that kind of retention will have, announcement will have to be made, the uh, both both and at and at stations on both the trains and at stations. Then uh, display both at stations to give time and distance of trains as well as arrivals of trains, complemented with announcement at regular intervals. That is, of course, happening partly, especially at port station and Maradan station. Uh, but it should be extended to other uh, stations, uh, other ma other major stations also. Then luggage trolleys could be made available, especially for old people uh, to carry their luggage. Uh, from platform to platform. Now, this is a typical uh, train of uh, train, uh, double deck train, and uh, sometimes these are used for 
uh, long distance travel also and you will see that the set of wheels sometimes is made common to both these carriages both carriages so that uh, it is very stable uh, on the run basically at uh, 300 kilometers per also uh, also also uh, so these are then then such wheels are called that book is called articulated book which is uh, which is very com comfortable on the run now what are the recommended issues that will improve satisfaction to introduce high end restaurant now actually in a station there has to be some way you know passengers should will be able to get whatever he wants uh, high end restaurants supermarkets and utility shops at major stations now actually in uh, there are electronic cards which are issued where you can reload the card uh, and then uh, through an automated machine and uh, you don't have to take it out supposing it is in your purse or in handbag when you go to the turn side it detects that card and also when you get into the train and you get down at the other station again it detects the card and it's the amount is deducted and the same card can be used in a, one of these high-end restaurants or supermarkets to buy something now that is how the Japanese railway of yeah, because these supermarkets and restaurants are joint ventures of the rail. They are joint ventures of the railway, so they have some sort of connection with them. The, then secured parking and ride facilities. Now, secured parking and ride facilities, uh, these are very important issue. Now, at the moment, we don't have parking facilities uh, in station, very, very few. Uh, and uh, mostly, now today, uh, if you want to get into a station, you will have to come in a bus or you have to come in your own vehicle. Now, if you come in a bus, the minimum cost is 30 rupees you have to pay, the lowest pay in bus, 30 rupees. Now, if a family of four comes, they have to pay 120 rupees to come to the station. But if you use your own private car, right? To come to the station if you have having a secured parking in, in the station then what happens is to come one kilometer in a private car is only 45 rupees because 360 rupees divided by eight in the eight kilometers on a liter is 45 rupees then 45 rupees divided by four people are coming only 11 rupees right whereas there's no need to pay 30 rupees you will use your private car you can come to the station leave the private car uh, in a secured parking spot and you can save a lot of money so this is, these are some issues the that the railway will have looked into or the policy makers will have looked into by having a some sort of an integrated bus service where you know an integrated ticketing system where the uh, when you buy a ticket it is very both in the bus as well as in the train that kind of thing will have to be looked into because otherwise you know people will start choosing their private cars more then uh, Utility facilities such as toilets, waiting halls to be improved, uh, facilities such as internet, electronic games, and also to cater for differently able people. Let us show some slides. And also consider the electrification of suburban railway. Now, uh, this electrification is a very important issue because you know you can uh, save fuel. Now, fuel, fuel comes at a price, and you know uh, the ticket prices are also high in both buses and trains comparatively uh, and then uh, at least by electrification sometimes the uh, ticket prices can can, can come down uh, and also there is fast due to fast acceleration and deceleration of a electrical electric multiple unit you know the travel travel time it has will be short in the sense the travel time will be less so those these things have been actually requires to be considered uh, very quickly now this is a typical turnstile. Now this turnstile, a person going in with a ticket, uh, you know the, the doors open, and uh, then the then he gets a ticket back, and he enters the train. A person coming from after getting down from a train puts puts the ticket, and then the doors open. But supposing the ticket is for this particular station, the machine retains the ticket. 
if it's if there's an onward journey for this particular passenger, which it gives a ticket back so that you can use it for the onward journey. Right. Now these these are actually not turnstile, these are flaps. I will show turnstile data because turnstiles are not very friendly with especially with uh, different able people. Mm. But this is a, uh, this is a flap. But these turnstiles have a different function also. Now this uh, turnstile after some uh, after some uh, months or whatever it is can tell you exactly how many people have entrained and detrained from this station, right? And how many people had have had onward journeys. So that is a, some sort of an information system where the managers can use it, use that information system uh, to actually improve and develop the station by maybe the uh, circulating areas can be developed. Maybe the amount of uh, the, the frequency of trains which are stopping in this particular station, if it requires uh, 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 to improve, then even that can, can be improved. And even if these turnstiles are not sufficient, there can be more turnstiles put so that people without any congestion they can move to. So there are the, those functions that they are in the turnstiles. Now, this is uh, a ticketing machine which is in Singapore. Now, when you put in the uh, when you go and press one of these now, one of these stations, uh, it will ask you how many tickets you they will give you the price and they will ask you how many tickets you want. Then you press the how many tickets you want and you put the money over there in this right hand side top and the tickets come out from bottom. So that is how it is. And these are also same way for electronic cards and all that, don't reloading electronic cards. This is the type of machine that you have. And this is a typical mall sort of station and uh, you can get uh, whatever groceries or food items or whatever it is. Now, now this is about the suburban commuter train. Now suburban commuter train is a normal uh, in Sri Lanka, of course, it's a decent multiple unit which comes uh, uh, on an uh, every about uh, 5 to 10 minutes. Uh, especially on the post line and main line. Now, suburban community class of travel to be renamed as business class and economic class. Now, at the moment, of course, there is a classless, but of course, many trains have first class, second class, third class. So, I, I, I think people don't like very much when they say you're a third class passenger. So, it's better to be, make it business class and economic class. Then, uh, also, now, main thing is in this suburban uh, travel, we have to attract the car passengers. That's the main issue. So the, because of that reason only that I have introduced a business class, if I'm recommending a business class AC uh, that will not entertain standing passengers. Um, and uh, then of course, I mean, they should be, they should be uh, charged a higher amount. Right. Now each business class carriage will be in charge of an attendant uh, to see that how many seats are vacant. He will inform the next station and he will uh, by text and he will uh, uh, get in uh, any passengers into the uh, compartment as an extension also. Then also the display boards and announcements will be made on board regarding next regarding the uh, next trains, predicting trains. Now, if you analyze uh, the bus and rail fares versus private transport modes, uh, you will find that if you take Rakhmalana. Uh, the normal fare is 96 rupees by uh, bus and uh, for the semi luxury bus 131 rupees luxury bus 175 uh, then i have to wait that way and that and the from rail fares are almost half uh, for third class is 40 semi luxury is 100 luxury is 150 the why i put this slide is uh, if you take the motorcycle to travel these 14 kilometers to Ratmalana, the motorcycle needs about uh, one fourth, one fourth liter, one fourth liter. That's about 360. Uh, because normally motorcycle does about 60, no? 60 kilometers on a liter. No? So in a motorcycle, it is only going to cost 90 rupees. That 90 rupees is actually less than the bus fare. And uh, third class. Third class they are also of the train. But in this motorcycle, two people can go. 
So it's actually uh, a person, it costs only 45 rupees on a motorcycle. Then, uh, so that is, that is the reason why there are so many motorcycles on the road today. Because actually it is uh, the boat cost of a motor, cost of traveling in a motorcycle is very much less than traveling in public transport. Now similarly, if you take a car also, now this, uh, you have to compare the car with either first class rail fare or luxury bus fare. Now, if you take to Ratmalana 540, that's a cost of a petrol car to travel the 14 kilometers. That is, I have taken as one and a half liters of uh, to run 14 kilometers, one and a half liters of petrol. But in that particular 540, four people can travel. Four people can travel. So it's only 135 rupees per person. A family of four can travel. 135 rupees. But if you go by bus, uh, in a luxury bus, you have to pay 135 to each person. Like in a first class uh, train, you have to pay 150 to each person. So now this is exactly the reason why people go have moved out of public transport and are now getting into private transport. One thing it is very flexible. Other thing is uh, it's also uh, cost effective because of the uh, prices of the public transport. Public transport prices are high. Then now value addition on board of long distance commuter train. Now, what are these long distance commuter trains? Now uh, in Sri Lanka, the Samudra Devi is a long distance commuter train. Then the train which comes from Mahabha and can train comes from which comes from Kandy, the all of them are. Uh, then the train comes from Putlam, all those are long distance commuter trains. Now so there, there could be a business class. Air condition as well as economic class in these trains. Uh, then, when I was in uh, uh, Germany in 1980s, uh, actually there was a long distance commuter train which had a bank facility also, a separate carriage for bank. And those people who were working in the carriage came into uh, commence their work in the train at the time the train starts from the uh, from the from the origin, original or, origin, point of origin, and uh, they are booked on duty. And there is an ATM also. And people who are in the train, passengers, can use the bank and do whatever transactions they want to do. That is it was a very convenient way of doing it. Now, I mean, when our uh, this one way to attract some people because you know they did not go, they did not leave the office and go. Say, tell the boss, you know, I want to go to the bank and this and that. They can do all the banking while while coming. Then also they could have a post office and a grocery and pharmacy. And I'm loudly thinking they can even have a hair dressing saloon. People can, while going back home, they can have a hair dressing saloon in the train. They can cut their hair and go. Then there can be a, other, there are other ladies who normally they don't have time to cook when they go home. So they can uh, have a food outlet for them to take something for the family. So those uh, services could be arranged a long distance commuter train. Then uh, when you addition on both long distance express train, now these are like the Udra uh, Manike, Rukumari, Kodimanike, and so forth. Uh, so these are business class and economy class. Only economy class to be allowed standing passengers and uh, passengers to be allowed carry their bicycles, uh, especially for tourists and other youngsters who want to sort of go on go on a trip or whatever it is after getting down from the train it will be very very advantageous getting them to carry bicycles uh, so now this is a type of a compartment a luggage compartment where bicycles could be carried carried in the train now uh, this is uh, in other countries this uh, allowed this way then off peak trains are actually uh, trains which come go up between nine and three o'clock in the uh, 9 o'clock in the morning and 3 o'clock in the afternoon. These are for off peak economy class. Those trains will cater mainly for housewives who wish to shop, patients who will attend clinics and hospitals, and visitors of patients, children attending nursery and traveling with elders, uh, and uh, school children who will return after school, 
and also it can be uh, pedestrian train uh, to express train or industry. Now, this intercity trains is a different product all, all together. Uh, now, generally, when we started the intercity in uh, Sri Lanka also uh, in 1981, uh, it was only first class and business class, but later they, were, they introduced the third class also. But uh, our ticketing should include the cost of refreshments also, like in um, certain trains in India. And there's a stewardess who is in charge of each carriage who has the trolley to go along and uh, serve the passengers. Then uh, air condition and Wi-Fi facilities are available. Uh, then commentary on the scenery and important places en route can be given on record. Then, uh, yeah, reading pressure is there. Individual movies and TV broadcast like in a flight, like in a plane. Uh, then leisure and recreation, electronic games and food therapy also could be introduced. Then announcements we made, states of running out train and possible connected trains and buses, so forth. Uh, then special carriage to view scenery, actually, uh, at the moment, what I heard was that uh, railway workshops at Ratbalan is making a special carriage to be attached to the upfront train, where they are going to be a balcony sort of thing uh, outside the carriage. Uh, for, because otherwise, we, we have, you know, you would have seen a lot of tourists hanging onto the uh, footboard and, you know, uh, looking at the scenery, but uh, that is not quite uh, uh, dangerous. So they are going to have a carriage with a balcony sort of thing, enclosed balcony, so that uh, it will be safe. Then also a kids play area where they could uh, uh, kids could uh, have a separate carriage for their uh, play, uh, for playing. This is exactly where the uh, on the right side you get where the bags are stored and. This other side, the particular person is working on Wi-Fi uh, with the AC socket and uh, near Wi-Fi also. Then chartered train. Now these are trains on the same lines as the Maharaj Express in India and uh, Rajasthan Express. Yeah, these trains are for group for which to travel on holiday. Uh, these are round trips actually, uh, in the sense that uh, they travel for about seven days with six nights with sleeping facilities by way of cabins and it will there will be a sitting room for recreation and socialization then separate kitchen and restaurant with chef a steward will direct internal operations of carriages and will look into the needs of customers uh, limited customers to be allowed to transport their vehicles not all customers but few customers will be allowed to transport their vehicles in the same train so that they in, in route if they want to get down and have their own uh, trip somewhere to somewhere other place, some other destination, they could they take the vehicle out of the train and go in a separate uh, journey. Then coordination, coordination and destination can be done through a local hotel. Now sometimes uh, during this uh, during this run, sometimes the train will stop for about one, one half a days. They suppose if somebody is uh, uh, you know is tired of waiting in the train, he can get into a hotel and have the meals in the hotel and go home and come back to the train. So that is how it is. Now, uh, now uh, it, I have been mentioning about the normal revenue that the railway could get through tickets, but there are other ways of getting revenue also. This is called non fair box revenue. Now, uh, as I told you earlier, joint, joint business with the private sector, I mean, restaurants, uh, shopping malls, etc., supermarkets with the railway in railway premises itself. That is joint business. Then, uh, in senior services for tourism, that is help and information desk with baggage lockers and uh, hiring of bicycles. Then, car parking facilities. Now, with certain small stations, you get car, secured car parking facilities and adjoining. Uh, the railway line is rented out for a service station. So, person who comes and parks the vehicle in the daytime, you know, he can always tell the service uh, uh, service center guy, come and pick his vehicle, service, and leave it back. So, he doesn't waste time uh, in uh, getting his service. So, and uh, he can pay it online. So, that kind of uh, arrangement could be made. Then, actually, to hire vehicles at destination stations, because at the moment, people don't like to go in train very much because. 
there are no ways to go forward uh, go to another place after getting down from the train uh, and uh, so hiring of vehicle should be uh, then advertising now advertising uh, can be done actually by in station premises advertising to be done uh, sometimes now during uh, both for 13 14 years back we allowed them to advertise and we got them to maintain the station right now i don't think that is happening now uh, now actually it's kalabu port station then the company which is station uh, like right we were we, we got them to advertise and we they maintain the station uh, even otherwise they can you can advertise from in the, in carriages passenger carriages outside passenger carriages you can advertise outside goods uh, wagons you can uh, advertise and also you can advertise on the reverse of the ticket now uh, during my time i introduced the uh, the first computerized ticketing system for intercity train on the reverse of the in that was in 2003 kendi kalambu intercity train and on the reverse of the ticket we carried advertisement and we earned some revenue then organizing disposal of scrap material now there is lot of scrap in the railway the engine parts are there the rails are there uh, which have been discarded now all those things actually uh, can be sold at a price uh, then the rail with the uh, track fittings are there fastings are there all those things can be sold at a price uh, so they can earn some money from those things. then sale of products according to signage of location now what i mean here is now supposing uh, it is in candy the brassware items and the handicraft items can be given some sort of a location in the station uh, to sell those things that will attract the tourists then in uh, martha and welcome site the clay items uh, can be sold then in the inori uh, danwe uh, flowers can be sold different kinds of flowers right now those are things that can be put into now this is a station which has been opened very recently in bangkok uh, so this is a fully fed station with uh, With a car park for thousand six hundred vehicles uh, in the station itself, and uh, and there are so many shopping malls. I think there's auditorium also inside the station, and uh, and around the station, uh, the bank office tried to develop the uh, area around the station as a smart city. So now this is a typical car park in a station uh, where uh, there are about now here i think about 1000 cars can be parked uh, and uh, once you uh, and this, this is all secured and uh, all all automated you you just take the car in the gate to open the car number plate is, is comes on the register uh, on the on the computer and then when you drive back also the You are, you are told how much is required. You get a ticket and you pay the money. Then this is a typical motorcycle and bicycle park in the station. These are the passenger facilities which could be at at a station, which uh, where the passengers uh, will want to use. Those are the some credit card facilities. Are there health center, medical center, nursing rooms? Restrooms, escalators, facilities for disabled, and so forth. Uh, these are the typical escalators in station, and this is for disabled people. Now, this is important. We don't have this kind of thing where the ramping is there for uh, him to get into a train. Of course, he is assisted by some stewards, stewards also. Uh, so, this is the ramp on this side, and the disabled person getting into a train. Now. Which then the freight transport. Now this is a freight train which carries about hundred wagons, and uh, there are two locomotives in front, one in the middle, and there are two in the rear, and uh, all operated by one particular driver. All these are multiple operated, the uh, locos, and uh, only one one driver is in the front loco. Now they take this, and this is another thing. Now normally in Sri Lanka people don't like to transport freight because there is double handling. You transport by rail again. You have to load into a lorry and take it. Now this one way, where the lorry itself, the tri-mover and the containers are loaded onto the uh, 
rail wagon this is called piggy back transport and uh, then once you come to the destination you drive the, take the lorry out and the lorry goes to the destination by itself by road <coughs> now this is a marshaling yard uh, where it's like a small port it's like a major port where the transshipment wagons etc are all uh, sort of uh, taken to a separate uh, line and then uh, the main uh, big packets are all put into another line and uh, the transshipment packets are actually put into various associated destinations and uh, everything is done done here at the same time they monitor the they monitor the empty wagons and from the empty wagons also to be taken to, to, to their destinations Pieces, pieces of marshaling. Now, in case of freight forwarding, uh, also freight forwarding for collecting and delivery of parcel goods. Now, in Sri Lanka, we uh, people we allow the people to come in to the station and uh, they bring the parcels, parcels, and then forward it. But now that system has actually deteriorated to the extent that now people don't want to come because there are so many. Issues when they come, they feel Arctic Arctic in this and that, and uh, ultimately they get frustrated and they don't uh, come again. So what I suggest is that this should be given to a, it should be outsourced, uh, so that you know the person goes and collects the waters or the whatever has to be taken by train uh, from the household itself, and then bring it to the station and he transports it, and again at the Destination, inter destination, another person takes it to the actual destination. So, and uh, this, the, the railway only does the transport, they don't have to worry about you know, how, the, how the parcel is delivered to the, uh, to the doorstep. So, the, then online tracking of consignment. Now, that is an important thing. Now, we don't have that kind of thing here in Sri Lanka. They have to introduce online tracking. If you consign something, you must know exactly where it is, like the DHL. Now, when you send a parcel through DHL, you can do online tracking and see where the parcel is. Likewise, your consignments should be able to be tracked. Then, online uh, information of yard space to stable. Uh, now, for instance, sometimes when, uh, when a train goes, if the yard space is not available, not sufficient to stable a wagon, then uh, he has to go to another uh, forward station and then detach the wagon there and the wagon has to come back. To the other station in another train. Now, if we so on, if the online information is available straight away, uh, you can inform the re recipient that the wagon is not going to be detached in the particular station today because there's no yard space. It will go to the further, the further station and then uh, it will be detached there and then it will be brought back the next day or whatever it is. So, that kind of uh, information should be there. Information to consign to consign the arrival of goods beforehand so that idle time for the wagon is minimized. Yes. If the, if the consignee knows that his wagon is going to come, then he'll be, re he'll be ready to unload the wagon. So then the idle time for the wagon is minimized. Then market for unit cargo such as petroleum, flour, and fertilizer. Now, actually, what I mean by unit cargo is uh, uh, one commodity, maybe either cement or petroleum or flour. Uh, which comes in a unit train, so that it don't it sort of uh, get uh, it, it's come from one destination to another destination, right? So uh, then it won't get delayed en route. Uh, so those uh, those things are pretty profitable actually, rather than having small small goods. Then enhanced structure gate tends to carry double deck, double stack containers. That is, uh, you know, the normally the clearance will have to be increased if one day or the other. If Sri Lanka railways want to carry Double track containers, they have to fit the structure gate clearances. The land allocation for industries actually should be done near railway network so that you know the handling and the transport is less. Now, then also the establishment of ICD facilities, internal container depot. Now, once the container containers are brought into one particular spot, it could be customized. Custom people can come and customize and then given to either road transport or further rail transport. So those things can be looked into. New new vision quality improvement, trade, establish ICD, use of road trailer and piggyback, international rail links, supposing now <coughs> now Hambantura Harbor, uh, the, the mother vessels are 
stopping at Hambantraha, then if there are any transport uh, containers, it could be taken by rail, supposing a bridge is put between Talman and Rameshwaram. So now those are things that we, for our economy to develop, now those are things which we, which we have to come up. There may be pros and cons, but whatever it is, uh, these things can be looked into. Then value added services in passenger uh, trains. Now, you know, in most of the passenger trains, the guard goes in a very big compartment. It's called the guard's van. Now, there's a, there's a lot of space where they could carry the groceries or courier services or maybe uh, uh, some other medicinal items or whatever it is, you can carry. And that, that, is not, that, is, that space is not used by the railway today. So those are things that can be used and some uh, revenue can be obtained. Then yes, the broad-based decision-making process. Now at the moment, the general manager is the one who is taking all the decisions. So what I propose is that it should be managed by a board of management who should assist the general manager. Because in railway today, uh, there are the employees are divided into many services. The engineers are coming under engineering services board. Then the drivers are coming under super supervisory management services. In the inspectors are coming under supervisory management, supervisory management services. Guards are coming under Sri Lanka technical service. Then there's another basic technical service. Then the station masters are coming under Sri Lanka technical service. So there are recruitment, promotion, and even disability action. Theater manager doesn't have any authority. General manager has become only a person who could recommend only. So actually, as somebody told some time back, he should be called not general manager, he must be called glorified clerk of railways. So then also uh, at the moment this continuous training. Now there's although there's a HR department which have been formed recently, I don't know whether there's continuous training. Now those days uh, during uh, earlier time, maybe 1950s, 40s, 50s, people were sent sent to India for training. Pune, Lucknow, places like that for trading. Actually, it is always better if rather than get foreign people to come here and do work, it's always better to train our engineers and get them to, to get them to disseminate their knowledge to the, our subordinates. Right? Even if you get a loan, I mean the loan is circulated in Sri Lanka. Otherwise, what happens is the loan comes in to Sri Lanka, foreigners come in, they take the entire loan back and we pay pay the loan also. Now these are issues that uh, I think the ISL also will have to take into account and then speak to the government and then get things done because during our time we never got any foreigners to do our work. It was us who did so much so the work. Uh, then research and development. Now there are research and development now cut now what I mean is now cut down on fuel consumption. Now especially you know in the upcountry line. When a train goes on curves, uh, the fuel consumption is more. Now, yeah, when I was in the uh, United States in 1996, they have done something where, you know, in such curves, uh, they have the engine itself, the locomotive itself, to inject some oil onto the side of the rail so that there is a flow by going on curves. Now, by that, they have reduced the fuel cons consumption by about 15%. So that's a big amount. So, then also research and different uh, research on different suspension types of uh, carriages to make it more comfortable. Then tank bed construction. There are issues with tank bed construction. Then uh, then there are drainage issues. There are geotex geotextiles may have to be used in certain areas. Um, then facilities inside carriages that we don't have. Uh, as I told you show earlier, the, we don't have place to keep our baggage as such. No baggage racks are there. So those things can be improved. Those are very, very minor things which can be done at the Rathnan workshops. Uh, then also the improvement of signaling and train protection system. We still have the old train protection system, the tablet system, especially in many areas, upcountry area, then the Betiklo line, Kinko line, and so forth. So those things will have to be uh, and, uh, but I hear that now India is coming in and doing uh, the train protection system and new signaling system between Maho and uh, uh, Andhrapur. Uh, yeah, now, so, 
actually there are various things which can be done even the even the in the track normally now they have put they are putting 15 meter rails now uh, earlier actually they are, we I, we introduced 20 meter rails 20 meter because the main thing is in a track the joints are the things which which are critical joints give way joints have to be maintained very often if the joints are not maintained there are the, the joints get dip and the rails will get hogged and rails have to be changed so those things uh, uh, for, to minimize the joints we introduce the longer trails so but now again they have come back they, they have come to the 15 meter rail i don't know why they have done so but they must consider in introducing the longer rail then also the at, the, at one point there were we were transporting third and i don't know if they got done mischievously or not third uh, got so broken so then uh, we introduced small containers not containers, uh, this uh, sort of uh, uh, this uh, basket sort of thing to carry third pots, and then the productivity was there, there was no nothing, it was easy to handle also, and uh, no pots are broken either. So, uh, then one on productivity, I noticed one thing during the last few days that uh, Sri Lanka railways they uh, use 40 million liters of. Uh, is diesel for a year, 40 million liters. Uh, now, as I told you, if each locomotive uh, goes four, uh, takes four liters to go, uh, do one, uh, one kilometer, that means 40,000 divided by four, they run 10 million kilometers for a year. 10 million kilometers for a year. Divided by 365, they run 27,000 kilometers for a day. You know, they use 200 locomotives. They, had, they use 200 locomotives along with the power set. That is with single power sets. Uh, and each they be using about, yeah. So when you divide the 27,000 with the 200 locomotives, each locomotive, that's only 136 kilometers. Only 136 kilometers. So the productivity is very, very low. So. Yeah, again, so this is something to do with the scheduling, scheduling of trains, scheduling, scheduling of timetables, and so forth. Then, uh, incentive and reward system. Now, those days you know that, you know, especially to keep a station beautified in Dietalava, Kaputali, and all that, there was an incentive scheme. The so they uh, the, 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 growing flowers and various things and beautify the station same way that same thing is not happening now but it could be introduced but same thing could be extended to other areas such as you know uh, giving a group to maintain new carriages and see that it is washed washed daily uh, and then uh, made it clean same with the locomotives now i feel i find that even the locomotives are not washed now maybe there's a difficulty in getting water water which i don't know but uh, this things could be actually done through an incentive and reward system. Then, you know, as I told you, uh, railway is not a standalone mode. Railway has to be complemented with other modes of transport. Now, this was done very, very nicely uh, during 1950s, where this, these buses, they came to the right under the foot of the port station to carry passengers uh, till about 1960 it was done that way uh, there were double deck buses also which came and uh, this is a these trams were actually running on main street and uh, they were going to port and they were going along Olcott Mahot to, Marada, uh, to Maradana and to Burella also so why I really don't know why they were uh, discontinued because only thing is, uh, I can remember during my small days that uh, there were uh, uh, times that you know the cart wheels used to get stuck in this uh, in the in between the rails, and there was a delay for the tram, right? So I don't know whether it is because of that or whatever it is, uh, uh, what whatever it is, these were dismantled, these were taken out, and uh, then the trolley buses came. Maybe as Professor J. Shekhar says, this is a step-by-step -step development. Okay, trams to trolleybuses. Uh, and these are these are actually 
climb between uh, Maradana and Cotahena, then uh, Maradana to Goralda, then on the port area. So actually, this was a very good service. But this too was discontinued because, uh, like I remember in 1955, these trolley buses, uh, this pentagram, were disconnected when they were trying to turn at Goralda. Goralda was a small roundabout. Goralda Junction was a small roundabout. You were trying to turn at Goralda, and this used to get disconnected and used to block the traffic. So with that, you know, they discontinued this trolley buses also. And now we have, now we have step by step, we have gone back now. Now, I mean, the monorail, now many people are talking about monorail. In fact, uh, I too was working in this Comtrans project in 2013 and uh, with the statistics available, was which was available at that time, a monorail was proposed uh, for Colombo. But that didn't come right because, you know, one thing is uh, uh, monorail has to have all these concrete structures. And uh, aesthetically, Kalapu is not going to look nice with all these concrete structures. So therefore, they proposed the LRT. Now the LRT also has not <laughs> come, whatever it is. So uh, now monorails are generally used to transport people from complexes or small cities or small cities, sort of villages type, to a station where there's a main train stops or a LRT stop so that people can have their onward journeys in those trains. And normally a monorail can carry in a particular line, it can carry about 500,000 people for a day. 500,000 people for a day. Now this is uh, in Las Vegas, I will go quickly. This is a suspended monorail, it is hanging from the beam and it is going. This is a maglev monorail which is actually, there is a cushioning of it uh, due to the magnetic field and this can of course run fast and it can go on a long distance also. Now this is a light rail system, uh, anything, any, uh, anything over 500,000 up to 1.5 million people, you have to come into a light rail. Now light rail is generally uh, with actually uh, shares with road traffic. You would have, have seen people who have gone to other countries. Now in Netherlands, it shares with the road traffic. Uh, of course, it has all conveniences. It has a display board saying uh, which is the next station, uh, then uh, what are the other connecting uh, light rail systems, uh, if you get down, go to our actual destination and so forth. This is uh, in the Sydney Metro. Then you come to mass rapid transit. If it is over 1.5 million people, then you have to get into a mass rapid transit system. Uh, that is, uh, you can see the Delhi Metro. Uh, here, passengers are waiting for Delhi Metro. This is Chennai, which we introduced the metro very recently. And this is again a ticketing machine. You can see, uh, this is the turnstile that I was talking. Uh, this is uh, that uh, small pole sort of thing is turning. That kind of thing is uh, rather, it's not, uh, this is not convenient for normally uh, disabled people or uh, different disabled people, uh, but for other people it's all right. And this is a typical station. Uh, this is a place where, the, for security reasons, uh, there are those screen doors on the platform. So that uh, when the tra train stops, it stops exactly on the door so that the uh, train door as well as the screen doors open and people can get in. Now, my recommendation for future improvement is that a uh, vision for railway de development, that is example, in to increase passenger and freight uh, mod modal share, uh, housing and officials to be built adjoining rail networks. Now our railway actually radius from Colombo it has all Radiating lines actually it should set to actually actually join with each other. Now, for instance, uh, if I can take now earlier, there was a proposal to take a line from Kalania and then uh, to Sabkastanda and to join at uh, Gampa once again. Then Gampa can be joined to Nigambu through the airport because now anyway there is no access to airport from the north. So that kind of thing we let be looked into. Then for the and to Panadura. Uh, now, those are things that can be looked into. Uh, and also have this housing and office complex in in the in that in that network adjoining the railway so that you don't have to use 
uh, a different mode to come uh, to, to arrive at the destination. So then uh, reduce social disparities. That is, uh, whatever the fares that the first class people pay, uh, you can uh, actually that can be excess fares can be used. Uh, excess amount can be used for to cross subsidize the uh, economy class passengers. Then sustainability of services. Now, whenever you start a new service, you have to do a market study and see whether that service is going to sustain. Right now, those things are I don't know whether it's happening because you know sometimes in the mind of a, somebody, I mean, they want to introduce a train. They introduce a train and they stop that train at various various places and that kind of thing. But then. Uh, Commitment and courteous of courteousness of staff that is important. Commitment is uh, will have to be there, and courteousness uh, to passengers will have to be there to see the ticketing, uh, ticket examiners and so forth, and the guards and the maybe the station masters they should have the courteousness. Then uh, external push for the correct direction, the political will that it should be there. Then uh, internal reorganization for better mission. Uh, we have to. Uh, instill accountability from top to bottom. Accountability should be there. And uh, furthermore, uh, at the moment, there are no cost centers. Only the general manager is responsible for the cost. The, the, everybody from heads of departments, if there are seven heads of departments in the railway, they too had to be uh, accountable for the cost. And they, those, those heads will, have, will be the cost centers. Those departments will be cost centers. Now, those things will have to come into play if the railway is to develop. Yeah, so this is the end. Now, small comment that you know, these facilities that I mentioned doesn't come free, they come at a price. So, sometimes, uh, till, our, till our economy grows further and our per capita income increases, sometimes our people will not be able to. Uh, enjoy all these facilities, but of course there can be a step by step development. Some of these facilities could be introduced almost immediately. So, uh, with that comment, I also would like to uh, uh, thank the family of Professor Anthak J. Shekhar, uh, as well as especially I must thank uh, Mrs. Uh, Kamarin J. Shekhar uh, for doing all the secretariat work for Professor J. Shekhar. Uh, when you are living, as also encouraging him uh, to get involved with professional activities of our institution. So, thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Master Sindhan. Engineer Priyal Silva for your highly informative speech. I hope the ESL would uh, definitely send those uh, suggestions to the respective authorities. Of course, with the cost benefit analysis, uh, I have been expecting that you would do a presentation slightly at least on that. Um, having said that, uh, to pay the tribute to our presenter, I call it in my talk, President. Our luxury and uh, engineer KPI Dharmapal, the chairman of SL, SLICE, come forward to give away the uh, token of appreciation to our resource person. Thank you very much. Our 
last item today to give away the word of thanks. I cordially invite uh, Engineer Mrs. Kamala Gunawardana, the Chairman of the Civil Engineering Section Committee. Silva, our past president of the ISL and the speaker of this event today, Engineer Dr. Kamal Laksili, president of the ISL, Engineer Professor Ranjit Disanayaka, president elect of the ISL, Engineer Mr. Dharmapala, immediate past president and the president of the SAIS, past presidents ISL and the past president of the SAIS. I don't know the council members, online members, and actually family members of the late professor, Dante J. Seger, and the colleagues of who are presented here, and CEO Engineer Neil Abhi Seger, and the staff of the ISL. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Actually, being the chairman of the Civil Engineering Section Committee, it is an extreme honor for me to give this word of thanks and you might extend my heartfelt gratitude. And as on this first remembrance lecture of the professor, let Vidya Jyoti Engineer Dayanta Vijay Sekhara. I believe today, actually, our esteemed ex speaker shared his extensive experience until I think becoming the general manager of the railway. He highlighted and actually managed many, ma with many examples, I, I, I'm actually I'm really excited that how he delivered his speech. It's like a novel to a short story. And I think we are very, we are very excited. We, we were very impressed with that. And it's really nice. So if I say something, uh, he's, I think, uh, how we can improve the yeah what he for, what he mentioned uh, importance of rail travels uh, when it comes to passenger convenience and he expressed how effectively we can ma manage with the cost and how environmental friendly so with these informations and technology how can we achieve the customer satisfaction and I think we have to get best use of our rail trans system for freight transport as well. So this is what I gathered from his speech today. So I would say this lecture will be an eye-opening thing event for those who are engaged in rail transport sector. I hope so. Now it's time for me to, my, to actually do the honor. Uh, first and foremost, I express my deep gratitude to our speaker, past president, Engineer Priyadi Silva, your valuable insights and words of wisdom brought, if I say, a very enrichment to this event today. So for this remembrance lecture. So I think that is correct. Thank you very much, Engineer Priyal. So Engineer KPI Dharpala, uh, you intervened in this event of the inception and you pushed everyone and within a very short period you managed to make this event a success so thank you thank you very much i appreciate that hard work and pushing us also <laughs> to make this event a success president i said dr kamal laksiri actually you are you are the immediate past president of slays also and thank you for your presence here today i believe your, I directly here, I think still not took your uh, relaxed time properly, and I, I can understand with your, uh, your away from the country and directly here. So, thank you so much.
for grace in this occasion. President elect Professor Ramit, I can understand how difficult you are here today to <laughs> be making this Saturday event a success. We are away from home. So thank you so much. And it's a great honor for us. Past presidents of the ISL, in the Chula, I can see, and uh, from space. Thank you so much for being with us, sharing your time with us. Uh, Council members may be joining online. So thank you so much for sharing your time with us. Yes. My appreciation to the Executive Secretary of the ISL, who are always with us. And at any time, you will give, deliver your services. And thank you so much. And the ISL staff, still they are here on Saturday. So thank you so much for your great work. I take this opportunity to thank the family members and the colleagues of uh, late Professor Dan J. Sekara. Thank you so much for joining us, being with us, and appreciate it. Finally, I wish to thank all those who have participated in this event physically and online. So, thank you, everybody. Yeah. That's all I have to thank today. Have a good evening and stay back home safely. Thank you.